Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we're going back and we're revisiting some of the ships that we have absolutely hated over the years. That's right, we're starting a new series, but it's not going to be like a full-on series like you'd expect. It's just going to be me kind of dropping into other ships occasionally that I don't normally play uh, because when I first played them, I didn't care for them. And uh, we're giving them a second chance, or some, in some cases, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth chances. But uh, today, we are taking out the most underrated battleship at Tier 7. That is the British Navy Vanguard. Or the Buff Guard, depending on who you'd ask. Now, the Buff Guard is one of those ships that literally, from the moment it got here, has been receiving buffs. Much like the Bismarck. But, I think the Buff Guard actually came out on top. And I would argue that the Buff Guard is superior to the Bismarck in pretty much every way possible. Whoa, whoa, Spartan. How dare you say that the Vanguard is better than the Bismarck? Ugh. I mean, it makes sense, right? The Vanguard would have been the most modern battleship ever built when it was built. It was the last battleship built, I believe, in the world. Um, and obviously the Iowas ended up surpassing him um, due to the fact that, you know, obviously we, we, went into, we were in service, pulled in back into commission like until the 90s. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately for that to land, that to land just found out the hard way that you can't be the first thing spotted in a cruiser. And if you are, you're gonna have a bad time. We blapped him with HE, got him on two fires, took a third of his health, the battleship behind me blapped him for everything else, and we used our reload booster with some AP to make sure that he did not live long enough to fire his guns. <laughs> Which is a real shame if you're him. But uh, you can see we take a shot at the Vanguard. We're going to uh, hit him and get a fire right off the bat. Now, we are running the Azure Lane Nelson build. And oh my god, the aiming in this game is so atrociously bad when you're trying to snapshot. Like, the whole point of the auto-aim feature is to make it quicker for everybody to, to engage each other, right? That is the whole point of it. But it has been so broken for so long that you just cannot possibly snapshot anymore. Every time you go to look at somebody, your camera looks in the ocean, it looks in the sky, it looks behind you, it looks everywhere it can to avoid looking at the person that you're trying to aim at. It's obnoxious. I wish they'd fix it, but they're not going to because, let's be honest, it's wargaming and they, they struggle to fix any sort of bugs that mean anything in the game. So, yeah, not going to be a thing. But uh, we take a shot there, we destroy one of the torp tubes on the hipper, we do get a fire. I mean, the guy has been blapped. There's a battleship behind us that has been on point. He's already just annihilated two separate cruisers. Um, and we're going to reach out and touch this cruiser again. Again, using HE because, I mean, there's no real reason to switch to AP um, if you think the guy's going to be dead anyway. I mean, look at the damage we're doing with HE. Um, and that's something that I want to point out. Like... If you're running the Big 7 perk, which I am on Azure Lane Nelson, uh, this thing is literally a mini Conqueror, and it has a faster reload. It's disgusting, and it still has super heals, and oh my god, thank god this guy actually shot me with his guns because I had no idea he was here. <laughs> I literally had no idea that this destroyer was here. I was tunnel visioned on the, Nel or on the uh, Vanguard, and uh, we're going to over-rotate, unfortunately, and catch a third torpedo here. Which is unfortunate, but we do have the damage con active, so we don't get a we don't get a perma flood or anything. And we're lucky we're not getting punched by that Vanguard. Vanguard using AP there could have hurt us real bad. Speaking of hurt real bad, yeah, that's what you get for shooting at me with your torpedoes and your guns, well, mostly your torpedoes. But uh, Vanguard over here, we beach. It's it's kind of a tactical beach. We knew we were gonna beach. We knew we were gonna probably scrape the edge of the island if anything, but. It's not that big a deal. We are angled relatively well to the Vanguard. We're able to use our front, our rear turrets to shoot the Vanguard, and we're going to switch around to using the front guns as well. Now, the one downside of the Vanguard, and the thing that has always gotten it into trouble, is that it is one of the worst firing angles for rear turrets you will get in the game. It is awful. I hate them. I hate the British battleship rear firing angles. They're terrible. They make you literally go full broadside in front of everybody just to get your guns off. And uh, unfortunately for the Vanguard, it doesn't work out in its favor more often than not because anybody with decent guns and decent penetration 
especially American battleships, uh, they absolutely obliterate vanguards when they try to get the rear guns involved. Now that being said, the Vanguard has a few things on its side. Uh, it has speed. It's not slow. I mean, it does 28 knots, uh, I believe, 29 maybe, uh, with this build. So it's not slow. It's decently maneuverable, so you got that going for you. You can actually dreadnought shuffle relatively well in this, which is something you don't get out of modern battleships very often. And the reason for that being is, modern battleships moved away from being wider battleships to being longer, skinnier battleships. And the reasons for that is speed. Everybody was in pursuit of fast battleships. They want that speed. Speed is key. Speed is what we need. That's a Rocky quote. You're welcome. Uh, but, that changes the way that your ship interacts with the water and uh, it allows you to go faster but doesn't allow you to turn as quickly um, it, it basically acts as a gigantic oar in the water meaning you've got really high resistance left to right um, because you're longer you've got more surface area of your ship pushing against the water so it's harder to turn makes sense right uh, but Lo Yang gets spotted. We missed our initial shots on him, but uh, we're going to try to adjust for it here with the front and rear guns getting all of them off. And he almost slips away from it, but uh, unfortunately for him, he had lost all of his health. And well done to the kid. This kid right here, I salute you, sir. Thank you so much for doing your job. I know, it's crazy talk. Look at him. He's put himself in such a position that he was able to help with this freaking, uh, Ako or Ake, yeah, uh, was it Akatsuki? The Akatsuki over here, helping me get rid of him. Of course, I blapped the crap out of him, so there's that. But he spotted him for me, which is huge. I asked for intelligence, he does his job, and we get to shoot him. And, uh, because of that, we remove that guy very quickly. Then he goes over and takes on a Lo Yang and basically solos that man. A Lo Yang is a Benson, by the way, if you guys didn't remember. A Lo Yang is a Benson with a smoke screen and the ability to have a long-range hydro. So in other words, he should be out he should be far superior to the kid. The kid gets a heal. But the kid murdered that Lo Yang. That Lo Yang didn't even know what hit him. And uh, that is what we call preferable. Having a good destroyer player is such a game changer in a game like this. Now, I don't know what happened to the destroyer player behind me. I'm assuming he disconnected or whatever, but uh, he is out of the fight, literally. So, uh, not sure what's going on there. But we're turning in. We're in a position that we can uh, attack the flanks of the enemy. Uh, you can see the location of the, the enemy ships right now. One of them is at Charlie, spotted. He's probably not going to survive long. We can't see his health, but we know the Massachusetts who is at basically our 10 o'clock. Uh, he is low health, and we're moving towards him. Now, we've done 93,000 damage. We've got eight fires set, and you can see he's healed a little bit. He's down to about a third of his hit points. So uh, we're going to see if we can't help take some of that away as we take our first full broadside at him at long range. Now, this thing also has decent range, but uh, not the best grouping. Of course, we are not running a dispersion build on this thing. Keep that in mind. But you don't need to on this ship. Um... If I wasn't running a uh, Azure Lane Nelson build, I'd probably be running a uh, Madden, Charles Madden build. But uh, Massachusetts angles himself a little too much, and the Iowa once again shows up and blaps the man. I'm assuming it's been the Iowa the entire game. The, the Tallinn, the Hipper, the Massachusetts, that man has been on point at blapping people when they overangle. Uh, so I'm assuming it's the same guy the entire way. But uh, we've been on point too. We've done our job. We've absolutely punched the enemy in the mouth. We're at 102,000 damage. We're going to take a shot at this Georgia. And you can see I initially switched to AP and I'm like, ah, he's starting to turn away. The penetration angles against any sort of armor with a uh, British battleship are terrible. Don't get it twisted. The, the British AP penetration angles are terrible. Uh, which is why I, I kind of laugh at, at Peak when he's like, oh, you got to use the AP in this thing. It's, it's amazing. Yes, it is. If you pin, but a lot of times you just don't, especially against other battleships. Against cruisers, fantastic. Against destroyers, the HE is better. Against battleships, HE is going to be so much more consistent than the AP. Plus, you get the damage over time. And so, personally, I prefer the HE and the Vanguard and the Conqueror and the Nelson. Now, the AP, again, it is very good if you get a flat broadside to shoot at. But if they start to angle, even like the super cruisers, like uh, the Alaska, the Stalingrad, those those cruisers, you will actually do less damage with AP than you will with AG, uh, just due to the fact that you will bounce and shatter more often than you actually do um, 
any sort of penetrations. But uh, as you can see, we get another fire on the Georgia. Uh, that gives us our Confederate. We're up to 115,000. We're able to turn in and uh, basically cause this guy to do no damage. He hits our turret and the face of the turret. And so uh, he just shatters. Sorry, I had to sneeze. But uh, yeah, we're going to just keep punching this guy. Now, obviously dispersion not the greatest at, at this range. It seems to be going everywhere but his ship. But that one looks better. And uh, sure enough... We're going to punch him. And you can see, we're doing okay damage. I mean, this is damage that you would be getting with AP with no extra chance of setting fires. And here we've got fires burning. So you can't argue with it. Like, the HE of this ship is disgusting with this Big 7. And we take another shot, and there you go. Another 2,000 damage, and we take another shot. And another 2,700 damage. And again, each one of these shots has a chance to set fires. So... I mean, you're not going to be... Now, at this point, I would be better off shooting AP. But again, I'm not expecting him to stay broadside. I'm expecting him to try to avoid it. And there we set two fires. So while we didn't do as much damage, we still get the damage over time. He puts that out immediately. And he goes back to battle tanking us. Which takes me back to the point where if I had switched to AP, I'd have to shoot a superstructure and probably get next to nothing. But there we hit him for 7,000 damage through the bow. We don't overmatch him. But because we're shooting HE, it just does it. It does what it needs to do. And he's not citadeling us very well. Uh, he hasn't been able to citadel us yet, so we're getting very fortunate there. You'll notice that as he was initially trying to shoot us, I stopped turning in towards him, which raises the citadel, so that he would have a better chance of overpinning. And of course, I mean, we're just going to punch him here. We, we get a secondary fire, and then we immediately hit him with the HE and finish him off. And that was a pretty solid game. I mean, a solid game. We did, what, 160,000 damage there at the end? Let's double check. Come on, Spartan. Hit the button. You can do it. There you go. 161,000 damage, three kills, 14 fires, top of the leaderboard, 2930. Basically 3,000 base XP in a battleship. And we didn't even capture a base. That was a good game. So let me know if there's a ship that you guys think is terrible um, in terms of uh, something that is over underrated, that other people say is terrible, but you actually enjoy, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, I will try to, to revisit some of these ships. Bismarck is already on my list, so you guys could save your typing. Oh, actually, if you want to type Bismarck all you want, go for it. Uh, but Bismarck is already on my list to, to revisit. But uh, it's just one of those things where I think a lot of people underestimate the buffs that some of these ships have received and uh, they are much better than they used to be so if you like what i'm doing punch the like button leave a comment below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and as always i will see you in the next video